and we are back with our second conversation for this morning and we have our friends here from the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO. Good morning uh, the to the director. Congratulations on your new found position, uh, Mr. Daniel Mendes, who is the director of NEMO. And right beside him, we have Ms. Renise Gillett, who is a training officer at NEMO. And of course, Mr. Charles Leslie, who is a regional NEMO coordinator for Southern Belize. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's hurricane season. And this is a conversation that we have to have. I don't think that it should be had once a year during this time, but throughout the year. So right after hurricane season last year, I'm sure that you all got right back into it and started all over again. So in terms of um, what, we're, what we have been doing differently this year for hurricane preparedness, where are we and how are we trying to educate folks to prepare now? Well, first of all, thank you for having us. Uh, in terms of preparation for hurricane season, like you said, this is something that is never ending. Hurricanes are our biggest threat, so we have to always be in preparation mode. Um, so you'll be hearing from the rest of the team um, how, we, how we look at preparation. Mm -hmm. um, preparation for us is not just simply for, uh, for individuals, but we're looking at preparation for your, you need to have your individual plans, you need to be looking at your family plans, in your organization, you need to have your organi organizational plans. Uh, all of these need to fit in with the, our national plans and the town and district plans. And so it's, it's a never ending cycle. Mm -hmm. So we, we prepare, we, if, we, if we have an event, we go through the event and then we look back at what happened and we learn from it and change our plans and amend our plans. And so uh, for us, we, we con it's a constant here at NEMO. We are always learning, we're always applying what we have learned. Um, you'll be hearing from our from from Ms. Renice, um, what we've been doing in terms of training, and you'll be hearing from Mr. Leslie what we've actually been doing on the ground in the villages and the towns in San Fi and Toledo. Let's step back for a few here and perhaps get from you what your vision is for Nemo under your leadership. For us, for me, Nemo will be uh, a leader in emergency management. Um, and so we are really moving away from just responding to events to really looking at the other phases of, it, of the disaster management cycle, which are preparation and mitigation. We need to spend more time investing in preparation. Uh, the data is telling us that $1 invested in preparation will save $26 in response. And so it's just a simply a matter of us really focusing our efforts where we need to be looking a, in terms of preparing our, our, our community uh, to become more resilient. Uh, we need to be looking also not only at hurricanes, but looking at entire spectrum of risk uh, in, in our country. So we are facing a lot of issues. So we've been noticing uh, an increase in fires across the country. Uh, how do we prepare people? How do we make our people better able to, to respond and recover at the, after that event? We are looking at other threats as well. So we're looking at the potential of chemical, uh, chemical accident, um, oil spills, and so we need to be looking at all of those and really understanding, understanding risk in, in, its, in its entirety. And this is what we will be focusing on at NEMO. So uh, in terms of not only looking at the response, which is very, very important, but how can we prepare and be better prepared so our response will be faster and easier and our, our recovery will be faster after an event. In terms of our preparedness and, and moving into the the, the lineup that Mr. Mendes has prepared. Uh, Ms. Gillette, how is your team preparing? Sure, so right after the hurricane season, we've been conducting training sessions, we've been at Aldi's Fest, we've been at Mango Fest, we were just at Mango Creek Fest, so we're, we're always sharing information. Uh, moving forward, we're trying to change mindsets. So we're focusing on the children, on the youth, and, and that is our future um, moving forward. So that is what we're embarking on. Um, also, we are expanding our volunteer base as well to include more professionals. Mm -hmm. So that would be something that, that's in the future, in the near future. How do you see the response um, when, you, um, <coughs> when you all attend uh, certain festivals and fairs and you have your education booth for, for NEMO? Um, what is the response like from the, the general public uh, about the information that you all I think it's good. Um, you know, we get a lot of response for volunteers, and we do. You know, subsequent, subsequently, I'm sorry, we train them mm -hmm. in the areas that they are interested in. 
um, you know, we go through the family plans with them. We're also getting more interactive as well. So for Agric, we had some puzzles, some, you know, some more interaction, more so than we are used to. Uh, the, the, the cultural notion every time um, we're about to experience a natural disaster, particularly a hurricane, um, the advisories from NEMO and, and other um, preparedness organizations are saying, please go to your shelter, please take your time, you know, do all of these necessary uh, things, but yet you still find that folks don't move quickly. They yeah. respond, then they get stranded and so forth, and of course the hurricane has to go out and, and figure something mm, out. Right. So what are we doing to, to decrease that? I know it's a, it's a record player, you put it on repeat, but how are we doing that to, to, so that we don't have these kinds of problems? Yeah, so like I mentioned, we're trying to change yeah. the future beliefs coming up. But, um, you know, we're always pressing, you know, know the shelters you're, you're going to. How will you get there? And these are things that are in the plans. But, you know, we're trying, we're trying our best to change that mentality in, in Belizeans. How are we at this point with uh, shelter assessment and what have you? I think that's one of the questions that comes up every hurricane season. While we look forward to finding out which uh, buildings and facilities are available for us to seek refuge, we also want to know what the integrity of these structures are. Where are we with that? In terms of shelter assessments, um, so we produce a list every year of shelters. So before we produce this list, this list has to be looked at. So the, these buildings are inspected um, uh, every year. So not every, not every shelter is used all the time because some, some do, do deteriorate and some do need repairs. Uh, we do try our best to work with, with, the, uh, with the government and with also all the other the, the, the agencies responsible for those to try to get those fixed. Um, it, it was a big challenge. Uh, it will continue to be a big challenge for us, but we are trying our best. So the list that we produced uh, for the 2023 season have been inspected and have have been assessed by uh, MIDH engineers mm -hmm. and have been uh, certified to, to withstand a, a certain category of storm. Mm -hmm. um, we will continue to our best to ensure that we continue to improve uh, the, the shelters because we do understand the need and the urgency of having safe and reliable shelters. Let's get Mr. Leslie involved with the conversation mm -hmm. as well. Uh, you're responsible for the southern region, correct? What has the uh, state of preparedness been like in terms of making sure that you are ahead of uh, whatever is to take place? Well, first of all, thank you uh, for inviting us. Mm -hmm. We are always in a state of preparedness. As our training officer stated, we are doing training all the time. The district coordinators are always organizing trainings and community outreach as well as public education and awareness. I personally go and as many of these public awareness and education, for example, we were in uh, Pomona, San Juan, Copen, uh, Independence Village, in Toledo, Mr. Param, the district coordinator, he is always visiting uh, these communities on Sundays because that's when most of the people are home and we uh, take family preparedness plans So, and we have public meetings with these people and explain to them what process will take place once there's an operation, uh, shelters, who will take them. And we're always having meetings with these like bus owners. We're having meetings with uh, fuel, fuel stations. We're having meetings with um, backup shelter owners. Mm -hmm. Backup shelters are shelters that are owned by in the private sector. Yeah. So we are, we are always in preparation. People believe that we only start to prepare when uh, June 1st comes, but mm -hmm. believe it, trust me, we are preparing all year round. We're doing training, we're having meetings, we're updating our multi-hazard plans, mm -hmm. and people need to understand every single month we do uh, a work plan, mm -hmm. and that work plan usually include training, mitigation plan, 
for example, I would like to thank MIDH in Dangriga and in uh, Stangrig District for assisting with the mitigation, clearing of drains, and so on and so forth. So we are always in preparation. Very say uh, you both mentioned trainings, and um, I, please, uh, you know, correct my ignorance, but uh, what do these trainings look like? What do yeah. they entail? What am I, if I'm going to go and volunteer for Nemo, what do I have to do? Okay. Yeah. So for the most part, we're training in shelter management and damage mm -hmm. assessment and needs analysis because this is where we have the most need. This is yeah. where we need the most manpower. Um, you know, come with an open mind, clean slate, and you know, we, we do a theoretical part and then we also have a practical um, to each training session. We also do emergency operation centers training. Um, this is every year because the, the members in an emergency operation center would change. So we, we conduct these training annually. And for the most part, those are what we train in. We have others as well, and I could go through those, but yeah, yeah those are the top three. When we're talking about um, these trainings and people that volunteer to come in and so forth, uh, what does that timeline look like? And I, and I can't imagine that you could give me all the training in the world, but when a, a disaster comes about and action takes in, yeah. you know, how, how well prepared am I to do this mentally and yeah, um, that, that's a good question. And we, so it's a one day training and um, you know, we hope to do it every three years mm -hmm. and that's how we keep people engaged. Yeah. I, would, I just want to clarify one sure. thing. Um, and so you, you were saying when the disaster comes, but really we have to understand what a disaster is. And so we, we, have, to, uh, we have to really look at the component. And so a hurricane is not a disaster. A hurricane is a natural phenomenon. It is a hazard. The, the, the disaster happens after the storm. The effects of the storm are what create the disaster. And so the better prepared we are, the, the, the exposure, we minimize exposure, we improve our ability to withstand, the, the impact of the disaster will be less. And so really looking at it from that way. So looking at the in terms of volunteers, we are, like Ms. Jelly said, we're looking to expand our volunteer base. We, we are looking to, to see how we can partner with, with organizations and with individuals to look at any sp particular work that needs that we don't have the capacity to do. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at having people come in and doing those things um, for, for us and really help us to partner and so we can, we can minimize the effects of the, uh, of the impact uh, of, the event, of an event. If you, were to, if you were to look back at Hurricane Lisa, for mm -hmm. instance, and perhaps look at some of the takeaways from that experience in terms of uh, emergency response to it, and of course, dealing with the aftermath of that particular uh, weather phenomenon. What would you say perhaps is one of the key things that Nemo has taken from that experience moving forward? One of our big uh, learning lessons was communication. Um, and so there were sometimes failures in communication or challenges in communication. Mm -hmm. So we have been really addressing those to better talk of within, within ourselves uh, in, the, in the emergency management. Uh, also, we understand that um, we, we need to do um, more outreach to, to our people to help really help them to understand what, what, what the, the effects of a storm can be. Um, and really ensuring that we keep on doing what we do, which is, um, which is really being able to prepare, uh, being able to house people uh, safely, and helping them to recover at the end of the of the end of a hurricane. We saw, uh, and kind of just to piggyback on what Ifani had asked, um, we're talking about prevention as much as possible, right? That is what you all do. Um, but unfortunately, as you said, the disaster happens after, and therefore we have to take um, take action. So based on what happened with Lisa last year, how um, has Nemo restructured themselves to take on the, the aftermaths of the, of the hurricane and the disaster? You all had to be out there, you had to collaborate with all these different stakeholders in order to get the city up and running uh, as quickly as possible. So what are we doing differently this time around? Um, really what we're doing is m more of what we did for the last year, which is more collaboration and really strengthening our, our, um, our relationships with our partners. Uh, it's important because NEMO as an organization cannot do all of the jobs ourselves. We just, it's just not possible for us yeah. to do it. 
but we saw partnerships with, uh, between, uh, between sister uh, cities, so Orange Walk uh, assisted in Belize City. So it's really strengthening those partnerships and, uh, and really and looking to forge new partnerships uh, with, with others. Um, but really what we, what we were doing is um, a lot, so you'll see a lot more of that, more collaboration with, with our partner agencies, the Red Cross, with the, UN, with the UN agencies, uh, and even within towns, you will be continue, continue to do that within, within uh, those. We cannot do it ourselves. We need partnerships. We need assistance from as many um, bodies, as many people as possible. Are you talking um, um, preventive, preventive measures for a longer period of time, um, particularly education campaigns on where your, where your house is built or how mm -hmm. to you know, build a, a, a safe structure and so forth. Do, do these types of um, campaigns fall under, under NEMO? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. Um, <laughs> <laughs> under the um, Ministry of MIDH, mm -hmm. you know, one, one of the things we're trying to push is safer building, you yeah. know, safer building. And that includes where you build your roof. It, it, it's a, you know, it's a big approach. So with, the, with MIDH, we're collaborating on more training for mm -hmm. safer building. Because Belizeans, you know, sometimes, you know, we build in unsafe places and then that becomes an issue for Nemo. Yes. When we have to assist. What is the strength of the partnership between Nemo and the uh, National Meteorological Service in terms of the fact that whenever there is a weather system that threatens the country, there has to be this uh, coordination between mm -hmm. both bodies to be able to properly inform the public. Uh, the National Med Service is our major partner. Um, the National Med Service is the authority on, on meteorological information for Belize. So we work closely, we work hand in hand with the National Med Service um, to, to, to prepare, uh, prepare the government and to prepare people. So um, we rely on them for our information. So uh, they are our primary source. Um, and we will do all we can to really uh, ensure that it continues that partnership. So they are our they are our sister organization. Um, they are very important to us. Yes. And with the Red Cross, because I know that after, <laughs> the, after the storm, there's all of this relief effort that takes place to try to you know, return the storm ravaged area to a sense of normalcy. What is the strength of that relationship? The Red Cross continues to be our, one of our most important partners. Mm -hmm. um, we have a good relation, working relationship with them and we will pursue uh, that in the future to, to have a better relationship. Uh, they, they have a lot to provide um, and we really want to make sure that we maximize our, our uh, partnership with, with them to really get help to affected populations as quickly as possible. And I, I one more time, I really wanted to, to ask about not just the training, but the campaigns. I know you said that you're going into schools and trying to, you know, educate the younger, um, the younger children. What do these campaigns look like? So it's something that we're embarking on, mm -hmm. and um, you know, we're we have a Facebook page, and we're trying to push out certain images that will, you know, reach out to kids. Um, we're thinking about forums within the and and symposiums within the universities, tertiary level. So it's something that we're talking about. Um, currently, we are visiting schools, but I mean, school has closed, but we, we, this is something that we're looking for in the future. Yeah, I know that uh, one of the, the conversations surrounding um, this particular hurricane season is that we're going through an El Nino year. And this, uh, we hear, we talk, we talk about it here on the, on the show and in the news, but can you please provide us with a direct um, definition of what that means for us and what that means for climate change as well in our region. In terms of El Nino, uh, the El Nino phenomenon is, uh, as you would have spoken to the National Met Service, is saying that there is going to be warmer, um, warmer, drier air in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. which will steer hurricanes away from us uh, to an extent. However, uh, I would like to stress that no matter, the, is, even with the presence of El Nino, we just need one storm to really put us back. So we cannot just say that El Nino will not, will result in us not having any hurricanes. We need to be prepared. We need to prepare as if a hurricane is coming because uh, it will come. Um, and so we need to make sure that no matter what uh, effects uh, that, that are being predicted uh, from El Nino are, 
we do need to prepare. We do need to be prepared all the time and we need to make our plans and we need to start our plans like from last month. So every individual, every family, every business, every organization uh, needs to have a plan and it needs to have a plan already. We cannot wait for a hurricane to start or, or to start making its way to our shores to start creating our plan. And so um, despite uh, what the predictions are for El Nino, we just need one storm. So we need to continue preparing uh, despite um, any, any predictions. And so this, that's really what we want to stress. We always have to be prepared. Uh, it's hurricane season, we just need one storm. We need to be prepared. And we need to enact our plans as soon as possible. Is there any way perhaps or it falls under the, the scope of, of responsibilities for NEMO to assess vulnerabilities in terms of communities that, that can be, well, adversely more so affected than other areas of the country or what have you? We do risk assessments. We do vulnerability assessments mm -hmm. of communities. Um, we have been preparing vulnerability maps. So um, we have been using some of those in the districts and the towns, right, Mr. That's a Tesley? part of our monthly work plan. Yes. Mm -hmm. We go into each community, identify the most vulnerable mm -hmm. in those communities. Some communities, the entire community is vulnerable. So we make sure we go in and meet with the village council. That would be part of the VEC Village Emergency Committee. And we make sure we create a database with these people. So, and that then gets feeds up to the operations officer and the NEMO HQ in general. How are we um, educating at risk communities to, if they are not able to, to move, you know, we have um, certain places that are very much connected to that family home and they will refuse to, to come out of the, or evacuate from these areas. So how do we educate them? How do we assist them in these types of um, situations? Uh, to be honest, Gales Point, for example, is one of the communities that um, the people historically would tell you they won't move. Mm -hmm. I personally went in when I started in 2021 I went with my district coordinator and the assistant district coordinator who is now the regional coordinator for the central and we spoke we went in and we spoke to the heads of families and we pretty much approached it more uh, as a public relations we encouraged them that we it, it would not be good for us to come in here to clean up bodies. Yeah. And it is best that if Nemo, not if, but when Nemo says or encourages because there's not a law uh, that people have to mandatory evacuate. Mm -hmm. So we encourage them, look, we will provide transport. You will go to a shelter. Uh, we encourage you to bring in your supplies but remember, you're not going to just be left at the shelter on your own without supplies. NEMA will provide supplies. Mm -hmm. And we have um, so far had good results from that approach because some of the people, they feel like, oh, NEMA come in and we don't just want to tell we what to do. We don't want to demand that we do this or demand that we do we, you know, we talk to them and their level and try to understand why they have that mentality and figure out how to overcome that on a community to community basis because Belize is a small country but believe it or not you go into each community there is a local culture yeah. and mentality and milieu yeah. in that in that community mm -hmm. so we try to adapt to each community that we go in that's interesting <laughs> no, I, 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 mean, I you asked look, the you question. Put it that way, right? Yeah, you, yeah. you asked the question because there's, you know, there is a, a particular lifestyle. If you are living on the keys, there is a lifestyle. Yeah. I'm not going to move unless the fishermen tell me I should move, yeah. right? And so it, it kind of um, it ties into you, to your work and what you all have to do to, to handle these personalities. My final question is, uh, once uh, let's say that this day the natural phenomenon comes in and uh, persons are moved into these shelters. Uh, there has been, um, you know, reports on there are not enough beds, the management is this, uh, the, the structure needs to be a little bit more organized once we get to the shelter. 
uh, how are we training persons to be able to assist in these kinds of um, situations? Yeah, you mean as in the shelter management? The shelter team? management. Yeah, so we're, we're going by the standard operating procedure. Okay. So once you get there, there should be a team that has the first aid kit, has the supplies ready. Mm -hmm. So it should be standard across the board and this is what we're training on. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to a manager shelter, these are what you should be expecting. And if you're not getting it, then this is what you should do. Okay. Yeah. And of where can we find um, the contacts for our district uh, coordinators, our shelters, and so forth? You can find those on the NEMO website. On our website, yeah. And on our mm -hmm. Facebook page. Yeah. NEMO.org.bz and our Facebook page is NEMO, NEMO Belize. Belize. Yes. And um, the, the contact sheet, it is refreshed, it is, it is renewed. Yeah all of the right and not get one contact with just plain thing the entire time right no, somebody's going yeah. to answer and, answer. and if you do Great. not um get a hold of the district then we have a hotline mm -hmm. and our hotline is 936 um it's very efficient uh, network we all calls are recorded so safe to say that your issue will be resolved okay. yeah. thank you all so much for coming in final words to our for our viewers this morning uh, our final word is um and make sure you have your plan, make sure you know where you're, you will be, make sure you, you pack, enough, um, pack enough things. You will need to bring three days supply when you come to a shelter uh, and to make sure that you know what will happen. So plan, plan, plan is important. Thank you all so much for coming in this morning. I am sure that you will be back because again, we are in the midst of hurricane season. Yeah. We have to keep talking about hurricanes yes. here. Yes. Yeah. Thank you all so much Thank for coming too. in this morning. Thanks. And with that, we are going to take our final break for the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back for wrap up. Mm -hmm.